one of my favorite episodes in all of Cell TV is about olive oil. Can you believe it? Well, look, we discovered a lot about this first harvest, fresh pressed olive oil, and you can only get it one place. We talk about that in this episode, but we've learned that it is this magic for fasting, and it's magic for controlling appetite, and it's magic for the cells. So we discuss that again with expert TJ. He is, he, you know, he's kind of like the wine sommelier, but he is the olive, uh, olive oil psalm. And these experts, they know taste, they know olive oil, um, like they know wine, <clears throat> but he brings some really amazing information about the benefits of these particular oils. All right, we're gonna talk about Italian oil this time. Uh, and also some other ways that you may not have thought about for using olive oil. And this episode brings it all to life and even why I believe that these oils need to be part of your uh, uh, cooking, obviously, but part of your health. So stay tuned for a great episode. Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I am Ashley Smith, and today we welcome back one of our most popular guests, the olive oil hunter himself, TJ Robinson. He is back to discuss and taste a very unique batch of olive oils with Dr. Pampa. This episode will be filled with actionable intelligence that will help you optimize your health on the cellular level by harnessing the incredible power of fresh pressed olive oil. So get your olive oils ready and let's welcome back to CHTV, TJ Robinson. And of course, welcome Dr. Pampa. Awesome. Thank Actionable you. intelligence. I like that, Ashley. Um, <clears throat> that is no doubt. What we're I didn't write it, actually. It. TJ's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that to me, which is amazing. Uh, Thank uh, you. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. No, I think it's, it, it's really true. Like, you're, you're, you're you know, amazing with, with fats and, and the detox level. And I, I can't wait to share a lot about olive oil. So I think there is a lot of action that you'll be able to take after, after hearing this talk. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, uh, this, uh, this is one of my favorite episodes. Why? Because, <laughs> you know, I actually get to ingest these amazing oils, which the three we're going to talk about today, I haven't tasted. So ooh, I will be tasting them ooh. with you all uh, for the first time. You know, I, we did the last show and, and Ashley will we'll put up the link and I, I want to dive in a little deeper on this show, but I think we need to, you need to watch both shows because I've done um, some Facebook lives and Instagrams about the olive oil and some things since the last show that we discovered one of which we have a lot of people that are you know intermittent fasting and you know trying to fast and we've discovered that these oils uh because they're hard you'll find out why because they're so high in something called polyphenols they seem to curb appetite so people just with a tablespoon of the oil are able uh to go on in their fast much longer. And we even have what we call a fat fast, where we don't just pure water fast, where we utilize fat is you know, a fasting um, mechanism. It's one of the fasts that you could actually do is we, what you call it a partial fast really, but we call it a partial fat fast. <laughs> yeah. But what we know is even in daily fasting, people that just like, gosh, I wanna go longer in my fast, we've learned to use these olive oils in the polyphenol uh, has an effect on a hormone called ghrelin that controls appetites. So we learned that, uh, and maybe it was something you said on the last show. So thank you for that. Um, uh, but we're also learning, um, you know, just the other benefits since we've been using your oils, and we've been getting a lot of amazing feedback. So we have a lot of people. <laughs> oh, <in the> good. <laughs> that makes me really, really happy. I'm so honored and just so appreciate your um, helping us be an ambassador for fresh pressed olive oil. Uh, it's been a product I've devoted the last decade of my life of to getting the word out about the healing powers of fresh pressed olive oil. I'm actually, an ex chef, and you know, got my start in the kitchen, and it was only a culinary. I only thought of it in the beginning in 2004 as a culinary item. I never, yeah. you know, of course I thought, you know, olive oil is healthy for you, blah, blah, blah. But I just really had no idea uh, as science started to catch up with this ancient 
ancient tree that was so special and had such like unique healing properties for millennia i mean it just really uh wow. so science is catching up with that and there are great studies coming out related to polyphenols for the 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 health benefits for the gut biome for the brain for high level of satiety i mean it just just goes on and on uh and and so it's it's folks like you who help us get the word well, out about the healing power of olive oil we appreciate yeah it. you know and you're doing something unique uh hence your nickname the olive oil hunter which for our <laughs> new viewers i want you to explain that name you know awesome. but again it, it's you can't get harvest you know first pressed olive oil you know in the store I, there's That's a reason right. for that i want you to tell the reason that that plays into why you called the olive oil hunter um, and why, you know, I think everyone should join the club because obviously these health benefits, you're only getting in this uh, fresh pressed, you know, first pressed olive oil. So explain right. the name and explain why that ties into this question of why these oils, right? Why these? Yeah, absolutely. So um, olive oil is, uh, olives are fruit and they need to be treated as a fruit, a beautiful, fresh fruit. So fresh pressed olive oil is very much like a fr fresh fruit juice. So my job, and, and I, I'm basically an olive oil sommelier and an olive oil content Years. So I get people access to the best olive oil in the world. I travel the planet following the seasonal harvest, which is in the Mediterranean in our fall and Northern Hemisphere fall. And then I also travel to the Southern Hemisphere in May and July looking for July, August, uh, depending on Mother Nature, uh, looking for Southern Hemisphere oils, which are also fresh. Mm. So my club members get for, uh, for harvest fresh oils each year. Uh, so we, we're a quarterly club and I, I'm the olive oil hunter. I land in country. I taste about a hundred olive oils. I find the farms the microclimates that are producing the best fruit. In Italy alone, there are 550 olive varieties. So just searching through, finding the most flavorful, finding the ones with polyphenols, finding the, the microclimate that didn't, where it didn't rain too much. So it preserves the polyphenols in the fruit. So they're bursting with flavor and I can produce oils with master millers who make great oil. And we can go you know, further into that as we go on. But essentially, yeah, I'm the olive oil hunter. I travel around, I find the world's greatest olive oil. I put it on a jet and I send it directly to my club members. So there's no middle man in the middle to muck up anything. It's not on a slow cargo boat. It's not sitting on a shelf getting fluorescent light. It's not uh, in, on the top shelf in the supermarket where it's getting a lot of heat. It's in a dark glass bottle. So there's a lot of different, um, you know, basically we cut out all the, the mistakes you can make with olive oil by working directly with the producer and me being there on the ground. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I'm very blessed to have 16,000 members now across the U.S. that every quarter they get three bottles of amazing fresh pressed olive oil. Yeah, um, I, we love it. And, you know, on this, on this episode here, I, I really want to focus on, uh, you know, my, my, my favorite country, and that's Italy. Uh, yeah. and not because it's my favorite country, yeah. honestly, and yeah. I, I've yeah. been there several times. Awesome. It's because um, most of the oil that uh, we're getting this quarter is from Italy. At least two of the three are from Italy that, that I'm that's seeing. Right. Or one is that's from right. Greece. That's um, right. You know, but I mean, all Italian olive oil. I mean, that's my heritage, right? So <laughs> I, I kind of right. want to, uh, you know, pull into this region because if you join, and I hope you do, um, and I know we have the, the, you know, our amazing deal. It's uh, if you join, go to pampaoliveoil.com. You'll join actually your club. That's uh, right. You know, you'll do it through me. So that, that's right. That's, that's right. That's awesome. But uh, anyways, they get the first bottle um, for a penny, correct? A dollar. But a for dollar, shipping. Darn, yeah, I, the I bottle's doubt. free, the dollar shipping. The uh, dollar shipping. Yeah, sorry. yeah, no, no worries. Um, and, and absolutely. I mean, because when we taste these oils, you'll see, um, uh, when you hear us talk about these oils as a listener and you see 
you know, the color and, and just how much flavor we're receiving from this amazing oil and fruit, you're going to want to taste it yourself. So what I typically invite people to do is take the oil out of their pantry that they're currently consuming and do a side by side taste test. Oh. Because that's why we do it. Like we're educating palates where we have a big mission and a lot of people to reach. So we send out 4,000 sample bottles every quarter for a dollar to try to educate palates and to train people uh, how to taste olive oil, how to compare it, how to analyze it, and see the health benefits for themselves. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, yeah, exactly you know, what you're offering. So I, I appreciate yeah. you, you know, help us, helping us well, get the word and, out. And again, I, I want people to understand. I mean, I, sure. you can go to a Whole Foods, your grocery store, uh, you can get some decent olive oils, mm -hmm. um, but, there is a difference. So before we go on, I want you to re-explain the difference of this oil. I mean, you did a little bit there, sure. but there is a difference of this first pressed oil uh, That's that right. most of the families keep for themselves. Obviously, the polyphenols right. are way higher, but yes. is that the, the reason you can't get it in your store is because most of the families keep it for themselves. <laughs> That's explain, right. explain why this fresh yeah. press, why you actually had to start this club. Sure. Well, I fell in love with it in Sicily myself. I, I'm a Southern boy. I didn't grow up around olive trees. We Most olive oil in the U.S. is imported uh, by boat and then distribution. I started this, uh, this mission back in about 2004 and founded the club or after that slightly after that um, and and really it was my first time in visiting Sicily I was invited to a harvest party with this family and they they said come harvest fruit with us and we'll take it to the mill and then we'll have dinner after and the moment you know when I saw the passion and care and love that these uh, members of the family were putting into this fruit that belonged to their great, 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 great grandparents, um, these trees and how they were treating the fruit so gingerly and, and and beautifully kept it out of the sun, covered it with leaves. You know, they, they took it immediately to the mill and pressed it immediately. Uh, this level of love and care was really just amazing. And then for the first time, I actually stood in front of the, the press and tried fresh oil uh, from a very early harvest fruit. And, and we can talk more about early harvest, but that was when my life changed. Like I'd never tasted this product before as a professional chef uh, and a wine writer and travel uh, writer. I'd never had the opportunity to try fresh oil, but the moment I tried it, I, I immediately you know, took some home to my friend, friends and family and chef friends in New York, and they flipped out over it. Um, I think we were we were kind of sheltered as Americans. Uh, we were only growing about 3% of our U.S. consumption back in those days. Now we're up to maybe 7-8% of our, of our consumption. So we're still importing very high levels of it. And around that time, there were also uh, a lot of studies coming out around uh, fraud in olive oil. There's a yeah, great no book. Yes, yeah, yes. There's been a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great book uh, really? by a one wonderful writer. Um, Tom Mueller is the author. A book called Extra Virginity, and he really follows this trail of fraud in olive oil all the way back from you know Roman uh, times. Uh, you know, the, the Romans were responsible, even Spanish olive oil, there's the south of Spain uh, in this area of Jaén, the, the Romans actually planted most of those trees. They were for the Roman Empire. Uh, so the, and there's a, in Rome, there's actually a hill that's built with amphora, clay pots that olive oil was brought from Spain back to Rome. And this, there's a massive hill in Rome that's all made out of clay pot. So the, the Italians have, have been involved with olive oil for a long time. You know, a lot of times as American consumers, we buy things with like a, an Italian flag on the front or, you know, they, they're very deceptive in, in, in marketing sometimes. But when you look at the back of the label, you see it's from like 10 different countries of origin. Yeah. That's like um, bold uh, low love olive oil uh, versus a uh, you know high highly curated fresh pressed uh, oil that starts with a very green fruit so that's the first step the fruit itself is harvested when it's super green mm -hmm. and in fact the Italians people used to have this assumption that Tuscans made the best olive oil and one of the reasons and you know you know the geography of, of Italy 
pretty well, Dr. Pampa. But for example, uh, in, in, in Tuscany, which is more central, northern, northern central-ish, um, is definitely colder than it is in Sicily. Mm -hmm. So uh, the people in Tuscany were picking their fruit off the trees when it was not quite ripe. It didn't get as ripe up in Tuscany as quickly as it did in so they needed to catch it before the frost. They would pick it very green and they started making this really green olive oil that the world just kind of fell in love with. And, you know, it's a, Tuscan trees in general are small. They don't get very large like they do in Southern Italy. Uh, it's a lower yield, um, but it, it created this, we'll call it a style of olive oil, this early harvest style um, that some boutique producers all over the world follow. So that's kind of like a, a protocol we'll call it, that just kind of happened naturally in Tuscany. Uh, but then uh, around the world, people started to appreciate uh, this flavor profile and uh, they, they, could, they could feel it's more help, help, mm -hmm. flavorful and healthy for them. So it's kind of like trickled around the rest of the world. So even with producers I work in Spain, work with in Spain or Australia or Chile, they all are very early harvest. So um, it has very low amount of oil inside the fruit, about 10% yield versus um, if you let that same fruit hang on the tree for another, say, two months, it could get up to 30% oil uh, for the same individual fruit. So people that are bulk buyers and sellers, they're in the market of let the fruit hang on the tree, let it uh, get more oil. It's all about uh, money. <laughs> more money. The uh, the health promoting qualities, the polyphenols, obviously go down. Uh, you know they don't have harvest costs. They let it fall to the ground. They vacuum it up. They you know make oil and send it to a refinery to strip out all the defects. I mean it's a it's a very slippery business uh, to say uh, the least. Slippery. <clears throat> yeah, I mean yeah. you're right about that too. And right now, I, okay, all of those if you manage to get 100% olive oil product, <laughs> all of those factors are still factors. The, the product you're getting, even if it's organic, blah, 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 very low, low polyphenols because it's not coming from the first press uh, to your point. Absolutely. Now, the other thing is, is that they're getting cut oil. Uh, most of the oils, even in health food stores, are being cut. That's the other issue, obviously, and you, you kind of breezed across that. But so to get real olive oil today is hard, let alone these high polyphenol oils from the first fresh press. That's right. You have to be a detective because it'll say like olive oil in big letters. But if you look, it'll see blended with other oils and especially in the restaurant industry. Oh, you know, I, terrible. oh, it, that is a mess. You know, yeah. they get, because it's so price oriented and they go for the lowest cost, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll be supplied with olive real olive oil but then a lot of times things are mixed in uh and it'll be a blended oil and i know you and and Marilee are very you know particular about the oils you consume you really you know i uh, you talked about that a little bit last time but yeah. please expand we, we, on that yeah no we we pound them and we go to dinner we will not make exceptions uh, we matter of fact we use the word allergic um right. my wife is allergic to canola oil and vegetable oil <clears throat> so we make sure is your olive oil pure is it you know i mean so we go through that question if you use the word allergic then they take it very seriously <laughs> that's really <laughs> smart that's if really you smart say, hey, yeah we want fresh oh yeah we use olive oil <laughs> yeah i mean i tell i can tell by the smell the color and the taste you know it's right away if you get a, a real good oil but it, it is very tough we know our restaurants well and we know the questions to ask um that's, so that's really and, and the reason by the way the reason why i'm such a stickler here is because these bad oils come in. There was just a great article recently talking about canola oil. Um, it's, it's rapeseed oil, but it is the most inflammatory of all oils. You literally yeah. ingest it. It makes its way right into your cell membranes, which is oh. critical for detoxing, yeah. your uh, hormone health, your health impairment, how you feel, your energy, brain fog, all that comes from your membranes of your cells. Mm -hmm. Well, these bad oils, make their way into the membranes and create dysfunction for 132 days on average. Wow. So, you know, that's why I don't screw it up. And when I see very sick people, one of the first things we have to fix is their membrane health. And you can't fix it if they're ingesting bad oil. So we have to get rid of 
vegetable oil, canola oil, and again, a lot of the olive oils, especially in restaurants, are being cut. Now, there's, there's rumor, too, that a lot of the Italian oils are coming over because the mafia has taken over. They're cutting their oils um, with some of these things, and it's bad. But let's say you get the perfect oil, olive oil, that is. Okay, let's okay. say you get an uncut olive oil. You're still not getting the polyphenol levels high enough to really have that health benefit, again, to protect those cell membranes you know, and to have all those effects that you said. So that's the point of your club is you have to travel different hemispheres to okay. get these fresh first pressed oils. And I want to I make up a point here because okay. the reason is, is people would say, well, can't I just buy a bunch from you and just keep them in my closet? No, no because the, the polyphenols drop in half in six months. So you want you to- You got it. I was going to take the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. You want to ingest these oils in six months. That's why four times a year, you're traveling to different places in the earth Okay, so the question I have now, sure. it's winter where I'm at, <laughs> okay. um, and why Italian and Greece right now? Uh, so Italy and Greece, you know, they experienced, Sicily started probably late September, and it's still going on in some places in Italy, actually. Um, they're, they're, they're in the middle of harvest. Well, that's just passed probably, but uh, in November, I was in October, November, I was in Italy. Uh, and and you know I always go there. This is one of my favorite places to visit. All I saw your pictures, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we have a lot of fun. You know, the, for me, going back to Italy every year, most of the producers I work with, it's a relationship game, and to get access to the best stuff, um, I have to maintain those relationships. I see them in good years. I see them in bad years. You know, they know that my palate, you know, will, will be will has to be my parameters my palette my profile for the club of the oils has to be met before i purchase and i've worked with them for many years and so for us to go and and be with our friends our friends now because we've worked with, i've been working with most of these people for over 10 years i leverage those relationships mm -hmm. to get the very best fruit um and and make the great oil and then i place it on a jet and i fly it back to america so i cut out all those things that you're talking about kind of in the middle the middle there where things get you know potential fraud happens you know 60 minutes did a great expose on olive oil fraud uh, in the last couple of years there have been actually since the last time we talked um wall street journal published uh in late november they said don't sleep on this game-changing ingredient when it comes to olive oil the younger the better mm -hmm. vibrant flavorful oleo nuovo or novello the kind of style of oil we're, we're talking about is a pantry pick-me-up you should purchase pronto so it's nice to see that in the wall street journal mm -hmm. and then the new york times recently said the world of olive oil is murky <laughs> that's a good headline yeah. here's 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 help for the home cook don't try to parse every word on the label the key to good flavor are the keys to sorry the, the keys to good flavor are seeking out the freshest oil and using it generously olive oil should be poured lavishly and used up quickly experts say that freshness more than color price place of origin determines its quality so thank goodness, you know, major media, you know, for years they've been, yeah. been reporting on all the fraud and all the issues with, with bulk, you know, low quality olive oil. They're finally catching on to this freshness. So our mission, you know, what you're helping, the word you're helping get out there uh, on the street is just really, really helpful. So we, we yeah. appreciate you because uh, it, you know, it, it's paying dividends. So we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, I have a lot of people, you know, health seekers and, yes. uh, you know, real olive oil that we're talking about, this first pressed young oil is is the magic, these polyphenols, you know, and, and I, you know, you have to understand that uh, the omega-6 is this uh, pivotal fat in the membranes. And I've heard people say, yeah, but, you know, this monosaturated fat isn't one of the main fats in the membranes. It's true. However, the, the fact is, is that these high polyphenols protect these membranes, protect the fats. And matter of fact, we even like said, my wife and I bring our olive oil when we go out to eat a lot of the times, right? And if you do get exposed, it actually even has a protective uh, effect there uh, to your cell membranes. 
So it has an effect on the memory. It downregulates this oxidative stress, even toxic input that creates inflammation of the cell. So it, it, it has many other benefits, as we, we mentioned at the top of the show. Okay, let, let's pull this conversation into Italy here. Sure. So, uh, you know, my favorite place. But um, <laughs> you know, what other advantages does Italy have? Because, I mean, again, I, maybe I'm biased, but I, I just love these Italian oils. <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, you know, I do too. There's some other advantages that they have that they put out some of the best oils in the world. Well, you know, the, uh, most of the best machinery for producing olive oil, high quality olive oil, let's talk about, you know, focus on high quality in Italy. Uh, most of the great equipment for processing olive oil from transforming it from the tree into to pressing it into the oil itself. Uh, most of that equipment, at least the high level stuff, was designed in Italy. So you have people who are responsible for building the Ferrari. You know, with the, these are Italians, like they're into their machines, right? So, um, and they know they're really good at this kind of tech. Um, so what they do, they have over the years continued to step up and be on the forefront and the frontier of trying the next thing you know let's let's um let's make sure our our fruit our, our you know maybe i should step back a little bit and just talk about the how olive oil is made and and then you, we could understand a little bit more um yeah so to uh, your point where you're sure. going to make is okay sure. get, not getting the right oil at the wrong times that's a pitfall right yes. cutting the oils Abs right I mean, all absolutely that. Okay, but now many pitfalls are how they make the olive oil right that, you, can, you can yes. make a, a great oil bad Right. You know, uh, oh, absolutely. Over oxidation. That's what you're going to talk about. Yeah, exactly. So uh, essentially the and I'll talk about best practices. Um, uh, you know, uh, ideally you have trees that were well loved and well cared for for the whole season and you've taken care of them. You don't just walk in on harvest day and expect good stuff. It, usually doesn't work so you have people that take really good care of their orchard uh, olives are fruit they need to be treated as that uh, so this fruit is picked and placed in small bins uh, again you know this is an italian way they use very small bins they don't use industrial you know systems or whatever uh, so these small bins are usually when they're picked right away hand with with sticks or with combs which um, take the take, take the olives off the tree uh, on these nets uh, when they fall to the nets they put them in these bins and they normally put them in the shade because uh, sun and heat will start to deteriorate the fruit then they rush them directly to their mill and I do uh, single estate oils so most everyone I work with has their own mill well eh, there are examples here or there where they don't but complete control over the mill they're using yeah. uh, so they have them on-site mill so they rush them to the mill and in the milling process so first the olives are washed then the um, fruit goes through what's called a the actual mill itself is called the crusher. So think of the crusher as being like a food processor. It's what basically they, they take the whole fruit, they run it through this crusher. There are different kinds of crushers they can use to get different aromas and different flavors and different mouthfeel on, on the fruit. Um, but this crusher is step one, and then it flows immediately over to this thing called a malaxer. And I like to think of the malaxer as the stand mixer in the kitchen, the KitchenAid stand mixer and what's happening in there the olive paste is just turning and during that time that an enzymatic um, an enzymatic breakdown happens between the parts of the fruit uh, so there's nothing added here uh, but while this relaxes for approximately uh, 20 to 40 minutes depending on the fruit um, a lot of things can happen in there like if the mill's not clean if they use too much heat if there's too much oxygen inside uh, things can not keep the antioxidant levels where you want it so they they're very protective over that they keep the relaxing time mm -hmm. short and then the third phase is sent 
is simply a centrifuge. This paste, it kind of looks like pesto, is placed into a, a centrifuge, which separates that paste into three different parts. There's the water uh, and, and waste, there's the oil, and then there's the, the pits, essentially, that are ground up at that point. But it essentially separates that into three parts. So this fresh oil, you get about 10% oil at a very early harvest you get about 10 percent oil out of the fruit so they're literally like if you see a bottle of olive oil it takes 10 a high quality olive oil it takes 10 times as many olive fruits um, in volume to produce this this so bottle give me an idea like uh, you know, bucket wise like if i picture a bucket of olive, yeah how many like buckets a, I, does it take to produce this i, I would guess at least a five gallon bucket to oh, do yeah. that one bottle yeah it's yeah. it's a it's a lot you know and and yeah now yeah. now you picture that on a tree like you know <laughs> that's a that's a darn that's like that's a small olive tree maybe that it produced yeah. or half uh, of an olive tree i don't know that's a uh, lot yeah, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. So these, these um, characters around the world that I work with, I, I'm very blessed to have these relationships with the top producers around the world. Uh, and many of them, you know, follow the practices that were kind of started in Italy of this higher quality oil. So, um, yeah, differences are the milling equipment, you know, the, a lot of the science, um, keeping the oxygen out of the process uh, that reduces reduces uh, oxidative stress on the oil itself to keep the aromas and flavors uh -huh. and polyphenols intact. So machinery is key. Uh, microclimates with really special fruit. You know, in Italy, we talked about 550 varieties of olives there. If It's what I talked about in the pressing report. And some of them are used for curing uh, to make table fruit. Uh, some are used for olive oil of the 550. Uh, and some are used for both. Uh, and, and really, these are um, very special you know, heritage, old variety, old varietal, and old varieties of olive fruit all around Italy that have adapted very specifically to those microclimates. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, are there um, disadvantages? I, I should say in Italy. I mean, climate-wise. I mean, you know, when you look at different regions, and you've seen obviously all the different regions. What are some of the disadvantages you see there? Well, I mean, there is definitely, you know, people, you know, it's it's really sad. There's some places in Sicily. In fact, I was just talking to my family about this yesterday. You know, you see those ads where like you can buy a house in Italy for one euro. Like there are places in Sicily, for example, where these many people, many uh, local Italians who, who grew up in these remote villages, they leave for the larger cities. So mm -hmm. they actually uh, have quite a bit of abandoned olive groves in Italy. So to see this in Sicily, um, there's a family I work with there uh, that is rescuing groves, essentially, like leasing them uh, from, from you know, other people who basically abandon them and are producing incredible olive oil. So mm -hmm. they're, they're there are definitely things that are happening in the culture where they're, you know, uh, it's hard to get a lot of Italians that want to harvest olive oil, like they're having to bring in more immigrants to help with that. Uh, so there are definitely things happening in, in the culture, um, but but in general, it's a very special place for yeah. olive oil. It's very deep in the culture. They celebrate that harvest. They understand new oil and the freshness of new oil and, and how good it can be if you're trying to follow a Mediterranean style diet or you're trying to get the benefits of uh, the Mediterranean diet which probably you know the ultimate would be like Mediterranean keto <laughs> you know if you could yeah. if you could kind of go in that direction uh, to, to try to get all the all the benefits of, of both those amazing diets well you can you know it's it's easy to stick to the higher fat foods um, listen, so let's jump into this. And you can probably answer some of these questions when we're actually yeah. tasting. I, I can't let these oils sit here. <laughs> I know, I tasting. know. You know, I mean, okay, so there's two Mediterranean uh, regions here, Greece and Italy. So one of the questions yeah. that I want you to answer at some point is the difference, sure. right? I mean, because sure. I, I've had amazing uh, you know, oils, uh, olive oils from Greece that I thought absolutely. were absolutely incredible. So what are some of the differences? But like I said, you can cover that as we taste them. So where are we starting it with this uh, tasting? So we're gonna start with the Greek oil, the Noen oil. 
And this oil is from a single, it's a single varietal oil made from a olive variety called Amphisa, A-M-F-I-S-S-A. -S -S -A. So a, um, it means one, one, one variety of olive, right? That's like right. Wine, one, right? Sometimes one, a wine is a blend of three different grapes, right? Uh, yes. Like Yes, you're such a great teacher. I appreciate you adding explanations because that really helps. So thank you. But yes, absolutely. Um, and, and before we taste, I, I might um, want to pour all three. So okay. the first one we're going to be pouring up and we have these small tasting cups or I have these little, you know, three white solo cups. Uh, Dr. Pampa has great little espresso cups. That's perfect. So no Anne is going to be the first one. And the second one I want to pour up uh, in this lineup because this is a great way to assess uh, different oils is when you try them together. So when you get a sample bottle at home, uh, when you try the offer, um, you, you want to line up your olive oil against these or against your, your fresh pressed oil so you can really appreciate the differences and see you know, immediately the quality. So I've poured up all three. No ends in the first position. Coley in second and Hermes is in the third mm -hmm. um, you know color is not a great way to judge olive oil but as I look down I see how you know vibrantly green and beautiful the oils are mm -hmm. uh, it tells me it's most likely from very green fruit uh, which is which is ideal um, so I'd like to just do a quick uh, smell across all three the first one being the Greek let's get a sense of that that's the mild one from the quarter. Uh, it's still quite grassy and quite fresh, um, you know, with things like romaine and that sort of like lighter uh, greens, butter, lettuce. The coli, I'm gonna smell that one next. I'm kind of warming it up in the palm of my hand. So this, this, this um, tablespoon of oil, I just swirl it around in the bottom of my cup and that warms the oil and that brings all the aromas out in the oil. This one's definitely a little, deeper green uh, color. And then the last one, and, and aroma as well. And the last one, the Hermes, I just want to smell that. Now the, 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 uh, the middle, the coli. Yes. Coli, uh, yeah. What region of Italy is that from? That's actually um, from just north. It's Lazio is the region, just north of Rome. Uh, this area is where the Etruscans were settled. Uh, they predate the Roman Empire. Uh, it's really cool. They, they, when they're digging in the fields uh, around these trees and, and working in the fields, they come across a lot of Etruscan pottery uh pieces so it's really cool to hang out with these families and see these you know thousands of year year old um pieces uh, of pottery from the etruscans so we'll start with tasting the noan the greek one uh this variety so so there was an austrian family who bought a piece of property in on the the in the pilion peninsula which is right between athens and and uh, Thessaloniki, it's this little peninsula that sticks out. And this family uh, from Austria bought a vacation home there because uh, there's great skiing uh, and there's you know beautiful water sports as well. Uh, it's a beautiful peninsula, um, but there was some olive trees on their property and they didn't really know what to do with them being Austrian, but they took, they, they decided to go talk to the, the local uh, miller about olive oil in the area and you know when to pick it and all that sort of stuff well they they struck up a, a great friendship and um, they produced some olive oil together so this this family uh, Austrian family went on to uh, develop an olive oil brand which is only sold in Austria and Germany I believe and maybe uh, Switzerland but uh, other than my you know personal selection for the club uh, but essentially they created a small co-op so they have 30 producers they work with who bring them beautiful green fruit this amphisa olives these are massive olive fruits um, they're also used in table uh, olive production they're beautiful green they look like little granny smith apples wow. uh, but they produce a very food friendly oil uh, so you'll see when we taste that and just to walk through the tasting again uh, the way we taste professionally taste olive oil. First, we're looking at the aromas even before we taste it. We take a, a nice uh, whiff of the oil. It should be green and fresh and yeah. vibrant, should be grassy and, and, and. Yeah, this one actually, I mean, has a grassy, really grassy nose to it. 
What's the uh, polyphenol in this? Uh, uh, I printed those out. I knew you were going to ask. That's right at 300, 297. Okay. So right yeah. at 300. And that's the mild uh, selection. So um, for, the, for this variety, like I said, it's a table fruit, but they made olive oil out of it. It's a very low yield. This Austrian family, they work with a great uh, miller there uh, who, who makes this oil. So let's, so step one is smell. Step two is taste. And when we taste the oil, when you're assessing the quality of olive oil, you're looking for bitterness. That tells you the oil, the, the fruit was actually picked when it was very green. Yeah. So bitterness is very important. And then a little spiciness as well. Uh, which you see on the back. <laughs> exactly. A little pinch in the throat, uh, which, which you'll get as we go in the up higher in polyphenols. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's the polyphenol test is the cough test, right? <laughs> that's right. That. Last time. It was like one cough, two cough, three cough. That's and when right. It you in the back, that is that. <laughs> Yes, yes. yes, so that's a hallmark of fresh oil. And again, that really dissipates in the first six months. So that's why we fly it in by jet. Um, so let's, let's try this uh, Amphisa. So in the glass, I mean, it is very grassy, you know, like, like you were saying. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard. You already started? Oh, gosh. Already. Uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, so yes, you, uh, wonderful aroma coming out of the, gra the glass of like green apple, um, banana. Uh, I, it's very, it's very nice. It's very like artichokes and almonds. And then I'm going to take a small sip. It tastes higher phenol than 300 to me. I'm, I'm it does. Be. It does. I does agree. It? Yeah, it totally does. Mm. Mm. The mouthfeel is so beautiful. It just like a soft entrance and then just really opens up and blooms in the mouth. It's not, it's not too overpowering, even though the polyphenols right. feel high to me. Yep. In, the, in the front of my palate, it's not overpowering. That's you know? exactly so. that. That's the beauty of Amphisa. You know, it's got like this kind of lemon meringue pie kind of flavor to it. It's a, it's, 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 it's sweet and spicy and green. A little lime zest. Um, a, touch of arugula or bitter greens in there like radicchio uh but but it's a very special oil um that is you know really well made uh well well cared, cared for uh by the producer uh so yeah that that one was um italy in some ways had a tough season uh this year they uh in the spring there were some frost that killed some of the buds. Uh, so certain varieties this year, because most producers, when they have a field, they don't produce all one varietal uh, because for cross-pollinization and just historically, that's the way it's been planted. They, they planted they planted in a way so that they can rotate the harvest so not everything's ripe all at once so some varieties this year that were the late bloomers you know they survived the early bloomers they got hit with the frost and so there were no fruit on those trees no fruit you know no flower no fruit uh so it's it's a it's a finicky plant but at the same time it it really you know um can be prolific and it's also the olive tree produces it's an alternate bearing tree like most fruit trees um, uh, so what happens is one year they have a bumper crop the next year uh, less much less uh, so it's one of those tricky trees uh, but thank goodness this year uh, in Greece the amphisa tree gave a lot of fruit because last year they had zero olives last year zero olives uh, but this year an abundance so uh what what god took away <laughs> last year labor of <laughs> yes oh <laughs> uh, uh, it is it totally is so anyway that that's um the greek one and we can move on to the two italians because that's okay. um where we're going so this I'm coli that we're, we're going to Italy here. Folks. Yes, we're on our way to Italy. So this now coli, we're, uh, little central uh, Italy right now. Yes, that's right. Central Italy, the Etruscan uh, area of Italy, just a little north of Rome. So this oil, I mean, the color is just so impressive. I, you know, yeah. you can't really. It's actually, it's actually the darkest of the three, would you say? <laughs> it is. It is. Not, it... not by much. On the the, the last one, um, that's. Is pretty darn dark but again yeah. you don't judge it by the color completely yeah that's right in fact professional tasters we taste out of blue cups because we don't want the color to um trick our brains into thinking it's you know more green harvest fruit so however um, i will say this at a restaurant yes. i can tell by sight whether it's been cut 
I mean, Within because it, it, it's, it's ridiculously light, right? right. And, know, I mean, on these oils, you don't judge it by the color, but uh, when when you cite that, like, just that really gold color. Yeah, yeah. You know? no, no, <laughs> not touching it. So let's smell, let's do a nose test on the Coley, see and, what and we come way, up with. I, I learned well, folks. I'm, you see me in between, I'm doing a little bit of green apple, because he told me that's what I should do, is green apple. Absolutely. It's perfect. That's what us professional tasters do. So the nose on this one, you know, it's kind of green and sweet. Like this one has um, a, a lot of sweet uh, aromas. Like um, I like a little marzipan, a little, little almondy, um, uh, definitely a little bit of uh, romaine. It's also grassy, uh, a little bit of lime zest. It's a beautiful, just green. I, like I think of herbal things with this one. I think of like basil and rosemary. I think of like green, you know, if, I, if I've just had fresh herbs and rubbed them in my palms and smelled my palms, that's kind of what I get on this oil yeah, on the nose. One actually smelled grassier. This one smells like, to your point, or, you know, a little bit more herbally. I, I, yeah, I herbally, yeah. I do I agree. pick up like fruit tones in there, and again, I'm I'm used to smelling wine more than olive oil. But right, well, they they do, uh, you know, uh, wine. People have this association that think that olive oil ages like wine, and it it does not age it's at worse, all. Yeah, it's worse, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to take a sip of the, the coli real quick. Okay. Mm. Immediately, you can feel the this oil's like richer heavier like mm -hmm. you feel more bitterness i see i i have more on the front of my palate and then yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is there it is yeah right? yeah that one said three three nineteen <laughs> is the polyphenol count on that one and yeah i'm i'm probably gonna get a little cough here too yeah. um but that oil it has a very long finish so this oil yeah. i really like with um foods that are bitter on their own like arugula salad or radicchio like i love bitter foods in general mm -hmm. i think could you explain you know i've heard pe people talk about uh, bile production uh mm -hmm. related to eating foods that are that are more on that bitter spectrum yeah, can you it, explain it that to me push bile from the liver which it, you know bile if it stays in the liver can actually become more and more toxic and we call it hepatic meaning liver biliary bile sludge yeah. meaning toxic <laughs> so oh. we want to move bile from the liver and bitters is a way of pushing bile out which is a very healthy thing to do to for it to be recycled and cleansed well we come up with a lot of interesting things that we would like to do some research on anytime i'm on a call with you and one of the they would be really interesting to see the effect of bitter olive oil having on bile production i don't know how we can well, you know what figure out a so way you, you just struck something with me because I've never done this before. So we would need, you would have to tell me which is one of the most bitter oils that you've come across. So I do something called the bile push, okay? Oh. So what we do is we take bind, that's a binder that sits in the gut. Okay. Its job is it pulls the bile, toxic bile complex out, which is a really big issue for people, right? Okay. As far as opening up their detox. Yeah. Process. So we put, we Take the bind. We take like three or four of this product called Bind, B-I-N-D. Right. It has four different binders in it that okay. only stay in the gut. It acts as a catcher's mitt to grab this toxic bile complex. So we take that. 30 minutes later, okay. we ingest a fat. Now, we oh. typically use ghee because it's very fatty. It dumps the bile. Right. But you're right. So we would be able to use the fat of the olive oil to dump the bile because you need bile to digest the fat. But yes. the bitter component would actually help dump more bile than, say, even the ghee that we use. That would so be we do phosphatidylcholine. But so I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to use um, one of the higher bitter olive oils for this flush, and we're going to try it. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to stay tuned because I want to know how that works. Because yeah. my theory is that it would help with bile production. Uh, so no, that that's super cool. Um, so the, the third one I want to taste um, is, and, and the last one we tasted, by the way, the Coley is also a single varietal uh, oil, which I, I 
you know, it's kind of special to have two single varietal oils in this. Normally I have more blends because I'm a chef and I like to make sauces and I consider fresh olive oil to be like a sauce that mother nature made for you. Mm -hmm. The one of her best products. So um, anyway, this last one is actually a blend um, uh, of, of one farmer who has a, a large grove, eh, not large, it's probably, I don't know, 20 acres, um, but he has different olive varieties on, on the farm. And the main one, about 70% of this is from a variety called Drita. It rhymes with Rita, but it's called Drita, D-R-I-T-T-A, I believe. Uh, but it's a great uh, olive variety from Abruzzo, which is just on the other side. If you're in Rome and, and went directly uh, east, you would um, you know you would go uh, to Abruzzo. It's a beautiful region, kind of undiscovered. Like people don't like seek out a brute so it's not a big tourist place but the the oh it's a beautiful spot on the planet and only about a couple hours from rome so this uh this guy actually you know all the producers i work with are great producers but this guy um there's an italian guide uh called gombrio rosso and they route it's one of the ranking guides of, of producers olive oil producers and last year he won uh olive mill and olive miller of the year uh, for the Italian guide uh, for olive oil. So his name is Claudio, uh, a very super nice family. And you would love being at his house. Like he takes everything from his garden. I mean, the whole family gets involved. You know, I know how family oriented your company is, uh, you know, and, and I love when they get the family involved to produce all yeah. these different things, whether it's, you know, whether it's the oil or whether it's the, the salumi that they make or uh, the cured meats or anything, whether, you know, the, the, the yearly tomato sauce that they're producing. Uh, I, I love how this, this is very family oriented. Um, so this oil is the bold, the polyphenol level on on it is a 451 wow. so it's a very bright uh, a very bright oil as you'll see when we taste it but yet it is still very calibrated so this 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 guy was very frustrated with the system the 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 local mill that he would take his beautiful fruit to and it would get destroyed he would so about 10 years ago is when he started his own mill and when he did it he said i want to do it right i want to find the best machinery in italy i can buy so he went up to uh tuscany and met with giorgio mori who is a producer of great equipment whose real history was in wine but now is working in olive oil as well but giorgio produced beautiful small boutique machines where he can make really high quality oil himself and have complete control from the tree all the way to the bottle so anyway Giorgio Mori has a, a big hand uh, in, in this uh, oil as well uh, producing you know great machinery and that as you'll see when we smell it it's fairly abundant in, um, in aroma. Uh, Giorgio produced a very special crusher that uh, crushes the fruit in a way that really brings out the aromas in the oil. So you'll see that in the mouthfeel as well. So um, on the nose of this one, it's definitely greener, arugula, uh, definitely more spicy, radicchio. This one's definitely stronger uh, on the nose. And then on the palate, you're going to get increased bitterness and increased mm -hmm. spiciness. So yeah. I'm going to take a a taste of that yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Mm. <coughs> there the, <laughs> yeah, there's a polyphenol. Mm -hmm. mm. mm -mm -mm. Wow. Mm. That oil Bitterness. is so luscious. Mm -hmm. Bitterness. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It's it's kind of like a a fine whiskey, you know. So, it's got a little afterburn. That strong of an oil, like bitter, bold. Mm. I mean, what what you're the chef what would you do with that one like oh, the other one i could see on salads raw this could almost overwhelm certain things right yes i would pair it with arugula because it's one of those um yeah, oils that's a, bitter, that, that's a bitter plant exactly so i say of this oil in my pressing report i'll hold up a copy but every oh, yeah, quarter way, i send you get out. that when you join the club which is that's awesome. right that's right it's a 16 page newsletter it's all about the challenge of the season why i'm in italy uh or wherever i am in the world and what my challenges were how I overcame them and how 
I met with and I introduce you to the three producers. I give you tasting notes. But for this last one, I'll just read you, you know, kind of like I know you're a wine guy uh, as well. So my tasting notes and, and my, my tasters and myself. Here's how we uh, describe this last oil, this Hermes. We said, beautiful green color, bright and aromatic on the nose. We caught aromas of chopped baby greens, fresh cut grass, kale, snipped culinary herbs such as thyme, oregano, and mint, along with cel celery, Asian pear, and tomato leaf. A hint of cinnamon and black pepper. This oil is sophisticated, verdant, and exciting on the palate with hints of rosemary, lime zest, Tuscan kale, radicchio, hazelnuts, dark chocolate, and black pepper. On the finish, anticipate the bitterness and spiciness of arugula that the, that, sorry, the spiciness of arugula and the hallmark sign of abundant polyphenols, a mouth warming, tingling sensation that lingers in fact my mouth is still tingling now after oh. that you know that small taste um oh, i said um inspired pairings uh inspired pairings with this bold well-balanced and remarkably food friendly oil mm -hmm. include hearty winter soups stews and braises salads with Sturdy greens, especially if they include nuts or fresh citrus. Generously splash this oil on white beans, chickpeas, lentils, and grains. Drizzle on bruschetta, hearty tomato-based pasta dishes, or grilled or roasted meats, including pork, beef, and lamb. Also, cruciferous vegetables, aged cheeses, oily fish, kale, chicory, baked hams, and roasted eggplant. Drizzle over vanilla ice cream or pair with dark chocolate. So that bitterness of dark chocolate and the bitterness of this oil are really interesting together. If you have some really nice dark chocolate later, you dip prepare it. Prepare me for that. Dip, right. dip it, dip it. <laughs> yeah, dip, dip it, do a little dip. But um, yeah, it, you know, we, we wax poetically about, about olive oil and it's fun sitting around the table and, you know, people are yelling out descriptors and it's uh yeah it, it's it's a fun little battle but those are uh those are the three oils of, of the quarter that i was really lucky to get on a jet plane and and get those back to the members yeah we're up to about sixteen thousand members now and every one of well, them uh, let's add uh let's add some thousands to that yes uh, come Yes. Thank you. Well, you know, it, it's really olive oil, really fresh olive oil. It's like the difference in dried herbs and fresh herbs. Uh, the fresh oils are like fresh herbs. They're filled oh, yeah. with essential oils and they're filled with aroma and flavor and they're not dead and dried the way most, you know, bulk. Well, I, I, look, I, you go to a fine is. restaurant and good restaurants are really, they're good because of the freshness of the ingredients, the herbs and the olive oil is key. So I've walked out of restaurants just because they don't, it. They, they literally can't find a non-cut oil or a fresh oil. I'm gone, yeah, right? And yeah, I, you know, cool. I've been in Italian restaurants that are considered good and they don't even have real, real olive oil. So yeah, it's I mean, this is uh, remarkable to me, but the key to the ingredients is the freshness and the key, as you know, as a chef is using the, uh, the good oil. You know, we use this for everything that we do. One of the things that we talked about last time is this actually takes the heat better because it's it's protective because of its right. uh, nature, That's and right. um, we just we just absolutely love it. I, I've turned so many people onto it because oh, it'll, tra it'll change your health, it. it'll oh. change your cooking, uh, and your pleasure and happiness. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's why we love oil. Yeah, well, you know, people, they really use it. Again, I'm training them to use it like a sauce that Mother created, Mother Nature created for them. They really use it as a backbone flavor ingredient. You don't, like most olive oil, you think of as more of a lubricant, you know, as to keep things from sticking and that sort of thing. You don't really think of it as like this major flavor enhancer. So, uh, you know, there, there are so many, like I, I think I may have mentioned to you that um, uh, Dr. Andrew Wells, my, my brother-in-law and his wife, Katie, they're both working their way through your detox book right now. So uh, they're like actively seeking great healthy fats, ways to stay this high level yeah. of satiety, uh, the olive oil, especially with the polyphenols can give them. So, you know, it's very, um, you know, it's actually a really good, um, 
all around uh, ingredient. It's an easy change, right? Yeah. It's, it's like a really easy change. It's, it's not something you don't have to go to the gym for another hour. <laughs> you just have to drizzle from the bottle, you know, so yeah. lift one hand. But, um, you know, so it is an e easy change. And I like how you, you realize and I know your wife uh, loves to cook and it's very like simple cooking. Like mm -hmm. it, you don't have to buy 20 ingredients of low quality, no. buy five of super high quality, you know, no. and a bottle of olive oil, you, most of my club members use about a bottle a month. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're, if they cook at home and they travel, yeah, some, they, you know, easy. It's about a bottle a month and I, and I can easily, you know, a bottle is around 30 bucks. I can spend that on a bottle of wine at a restaurant and a meal quite easily for, for a bottle of wine to have with my meal and it'd be gone in 20 minutes. Yeah. I can literally improve hundreds of plates of food over the course of a month with this oh. lovingly made, you know, hand curated trio of oil. So I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a no brainer, honestly. It's, it's, it's a hidden uh, biohack, uh, you know, it really is. It's, <laughs> it's you right. know, it's, a, it's the most affordable of all, like you said. I mean, you know, $30 for a, a bottle of wine, one just in one meal, this yeah. lasts, like you said, a month. I mean, we're, we're pouring it, you know, liberally. I, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Honestly, I, I don't put my mouth on it, but I just pour it into my mouth. I do. I, I, I do know. that at least once a day. My kids <laughs> see me, do, you know, just I dousing it. I, um, it. I do that. That's what I do. But I use it on everything that I cook. Uh, I mean, everything, including my eggs. And my wife and I actually even use it on our skin. We actually do, especially Ooh. when we're getting a lot of sun. We, awesome. we, we, we use it on our skin. That's so. fantastic. Well, the antioxidants are really good for, you know, have, they use a lot of, um, a lot of, if you'll see skincare products, they will use olive oil extracts and olive oil polyphenols in skincare products and some high end yeah, skincare but lines. I would argue that they're probably denatured and they're not getting the, the, you know, the fresh press, the first That's, press like this with the polyphenols. The polyphenols is where the magic is and all the, yeah. Yes, you know, yes, matrix yes. of uh, proteins and fats that are in there. My gosh. Anyways, yeah, that's why we use it. I mean, you can just put it on and put a lotion on top of it just to take the oil glaze down if you need to. But, you know, if it's added to a product you have, it's probably denatured. That's why add it to your product is my great. suggestion. That's, and that's ingest great. it daily on everything you do. We're out of time. This was a great oh, show. No. Always, <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, you so fast. Yeah, we love you. So hey, we it. love you too. And don't, don't spoil any more shirts. Last time I saw Marilee and you were together and you grabbed the bottle and chugged it. Uh, she's like, don't get olive oil on another one of your shirts. Don't ruin another shirt. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Be careful now. You're going to get us both in trouble if well, I continue to be your olive oil, uh, you know, sommelier. <laughs> yeah, no, you are our olive oil sommelier here on uh, Cellular Healing TV. And we love you and Thank appreciate you, you for Thank that. You. And uh, appreciate it. join pompoliveoil.com, pompoliveoil.com. Yes. Yeah. Join yeah. the club, man. It's uh, take your health uh, to the next level. Enter your cooking. TJ, thank yes. you. Hey, a pleasure. Thank you. Look forward yeah. to next time. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. All right, big hug. Ciao. Yeah. Ciao. Grazie mille. Ciao. Ciao. Arrivederci. See you. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. This episode was brought to you by Cyto Detox. Please check it out at buycytonow.com. We'll be back next week and every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We truly appreciate your support. You can always find us at cellularhealing.tv. And please remember to spread the love by liking, subscribing, giving an iTunes review, and sharing the show with anyone you think may benefit from the information heard here. And as always, thanks for listening.